Hello, my name is Allison Bovard, and it has been my privilege to serve as president of the Women of St. Michael this year. I wish we were gathered together in person today, but instead we gather virtually to preserve our traditions of celebrating the past year's activities and introducing our new president and board. I'd like to thank the members of this year's board, and I'd like to thank all of the Women of St. Michael. We are a strong organization because of the generous gifts of time, talent, and treasure that each of you gives to the St. Michael community. Planning and producing the many activities for the year requires a team of enthusiastic volunteers, some of whom started their work last spring. Special thanks go to Jenny Lichty, who produced our newsletter, and to Judy Connor, who planned our programs. Our year was based around the Bible verse, John 15, 12, love one another as I have loved you, and the theme of strengthening community through relationships. Our fall luncheons entertained and informed us as we heard about the experiences of Kathleen Flatley, a graduate of Ursuline, and a Secret Service agent who guarded world leaders like Pope John Paul II, the King of Jordan, George W. Bush, and Michelle Obama. We learned about signs of humanity a documentary centered on the signs carried by those experiencing homelessness and created by SMU professor, entrepreneur, and artist, Willie Baronet. And we shared in reflections and observations about pilgrimages by Nancy Mead, who has walked more than 6,000 miles over the last 20 years. This program was especially meaningful as 30 women from our parish walked over 70 miles on the Camino de Compostela de Santiago in Spain last September. Led by Mary Lessman and Margaret Spellings, this group of travelers returned, forever changed and inspired by this experience. In January, we hosted a special evening gathering when St. Michael's own Tom Luce and the other Margaret Spellings engaged in an animated conversation that was moderated by the talented Diana Newton and that focused on Texas 2036, an organization created by Tom Luce to explore the critical issues and challenges facing Texas as we prepare for the future and our bicentennial in 2036. February found us at the Filter Building on White Rock Lake for an evening of parish-wide fellowship as we gathered for a festive Mardi Gras celebration. Who knew that this end of February event would be one of the last large gatherings of our parishioners before we all started sheltering at home? We had one last event in early March when we hosted a mother-daughter tea at Jubilee Park before having to cancel April's day of service and today's luncheon, of course. The whole country shifted to a new normal that included now familiar terms like social distancing, COVID-19, Zoom meetings, flattening the curve, and sheltering in place. And that found us praying each day for first responders, healthcare workers, and the thousands of people infected by the novel coronavirus, and of course, for their families. By early March, the Gifts Committee had done its research and site visits associated with researching grant requests, and the committee continued to meet virtually. Guided by the passage from Matthew 25, with grants given out this month to provide food, clothing, and shelter to the most vulnerable, we have surpassed the $9.9 .9 million mark in giving back to the community by the women of St. Michael over the past 60 years. Special thanks go to Judy Cole, who led our gifts committee during unprecedented times and who guided us to find a way to support so many agencies during a difficult time with reduced funding. Serving as the president of the Women of St. Michael has been a true honor for me. I am grateful to everyone on the board who helped make this year a success. And this is the point in the program when I would have asked you all to stand to be recognized. Feel free to do so at home and know that I am cheering for you. I would also have asked the past presidents to stand to be acknowledged. I must single out for thanks my immediate predecessors, Christine Paddock, Tricia Stewart, Squeaky Connolly, Margaret Servan, and Whitney Grogan, who were constant sources of support and who blessedly always responded to my calls and text messages. Likewise, I want to recognize Deanne Annigan and her team of volunteers at the Exchange, and to encourage everyone to remember to shop at the Exchange, both online and in person, as it becomes possible to do so. 
I would also like to thank the mighty staff of St. Michael for their efforts to support our activities at every turn. Facilities, operations, parish life, communications, and of course the clergy, with special thanks to Mary Lessman and Chris Garada. We are so fortunate to have this community of devoted and hardworking people committed to the work of our beloved parish. St. Michael and All Angels has been my family's parish home for more than 20 years, and this experience this past year has challenged me and helped me grow in new ways. I am thankful for that. I wish to thank my family, Jack, Sam, Charlie, and Chris, for the support they gave me and for always patiently waiting for me for just one more email, one more phone call, one more meeting. It is now my pleasure to introduce our next president, a woman who at St. Michael and in Dallas truly needs no introduction and who has served in so many capacities, Jeff Rice. Her strong yet gentle and compassionate presence will provide just the leadership we need for the year ahead and the unpredictable days to come. As most of you know, Jeff and Daryl are involved and active members of the St. Michael, Jubilee, and Dallas communities, and their children and grandchildren provide them with additional immeasurable joy. Personally, I feel fortunate to call Jeff a friend, and I am honored to introduce her as the new president of the Women of St. Michael as we prepare for the 75th anniversary of St. Michael and All Angels. Although we couldn't be together for our luncheon and to hear from our special guests, the Satellite Sisters, they have sent us a video message. The Satellite Sisters connect perfectly with our theme of strengthening community through relationships. I hope that after listening to their message, you will download their podcast and consider picking up a copy of Leon Dolan's new novel, The Sweeney Sisters. It's a clever and heartwarming story that's just right for these challenging times. Leon would have been signing her book at the exchange following the luncheon. One of the sisters, Julie, is a dear friend, and I'm thrilled that she and her sisters have prepared a message for us. Once again, thank you for the privilege of having me serve as the president of the Women of St. Michael. I pray that each of you and your families stay safe during the uncertain days ahead, and that you find peace in the small, everyday acts of grace that are all around us. Thank you. <laughs>